How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the next episode on how to create HTML and CSS. Now in this episode, a lot of you requested me to show you how to create a URL rewrite for your website, which means that if you were to go to, for example, m2.net forward slash gallery.html, then instead it should say m2.net forward slash gallery without the extension behind it. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. And before I do that, there are three things that I want to mention before I show you how to actually do it. Now, if this is not the first time that you try to do this and you just want to see how it's done, then you're more than welcome to jump to the timestamp at the bottom here and see how it's done. But again, like I said, if this is your first time doing this, I really recommend you to hear what I have to say before you get into the how to actually do it. So the first thing I want to mention is the fact that we will be going into our HT access file inside our server. Now, if you don't know what an HT access file is, I briefly talked about in the previous episode, but just in case anyone jumped into this course in the middle of it and didn't see the previous episode, I will show how to create the HT access file, which is really easy to do. So there's, there's nothing to worry about there. Now, the second thing I want to mention is the fact that I will explain every single bit of code that we're going to write inside the HT access file. And the reason I'm saying this is because I have a habit of uh, searching on YouTube and on Google to see how many tutorials exist already on the topic that I'm going to create for my next lesson on this channel here. And when it came to creating a URL rewrite, which we're going to do in this episode, there is a lot of people who show you how to do it, but they just tell you to copy paste the code into the HT access file without actually explaining what exactly it does. And I'm not sitting here saying that my lesson is going to be better than anyone else's. I just want to say that at least to me, it's very important when people watch a lesson or a tutorial that you don't just show them you know how to do it but you also explain why you do the certain things you do especially in this case since we're going to be messing around with an ht access file for our website which is a server configuration file mean that if you make a mistake then your website is going to go down until you fix the mistake so it's very important you understand what it is you're inserting into the ht access file now the last thing i want to mention before we get into this episode is the fact that the code that you're going to write is going to look slightly different than most other people on the internet and i'm not saying that because i have a special way of writing it i'm saying that because if you were to go on the internet on youtube or google and search for how to do this then everyone has a different way of doing it for some reason and i'm saying this because i know there's going to be people going to the comment field of this video and ask me why didn't i write it in this way and again, that way might work as well, but the way I'm going to do it in this episode is in the most simple way I know possible. So it's not going to be overly complicated. So now that I said all this, let's actually go ahead and get started on the actual lesson. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first of all, see the website I have in front of me here, which is going to be the website that I'm going to make changes to. So right now, if we were to go to my cases page up here in the top right corner, you can see that it says cases .html inside the URL. Now I wanted to say just cases without anything behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go inside my editor and I'm going to open up my index page. And I did actually open uh, my online version of the index page inside my editor. So if I make any changes to it and save it, it's going to upload it directly to my server, just in case you had questions about that. So if I were to go inside my index page and go down to where I have my link that says cases.html, which is going to be the page that's going to open up. I'm going to delete dot HTML behind it. <laughs> My keyboard wouldn't react when I click delete on it, but it's okay now. So I just want to say that you only need to have the page name inside the links inside uh, your document. So right now, as you can see, if I want to link to my cases.html page, we only want to have cases inside the link name. The extension we're going to grab and do something with later on inside the HTAccess access file. So don't worry about that for now. Before I change everything inside this document here and change all the extensions and remove them, I just want to test out if this uh, cases page link is going to work. So I'm going to upload my new index page to uh, my online server. And then we're going to go and create a new document, which is going to be the HT access page we need to have inside our uh, root folder inside our online version of the website. So I'm going to save this file and I'm just going to go ahead and save it as on my desktop, for example, which is here. And I'm going to go ahead and save it as dot HT access. And that's it. I'm just going to replace the one I have here already. And that's it. Uh, don't call it anything else. You don't have to call a file.htaccess because it's very important that you call it specifically punctuation htaccess. And that's it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
inside the HT access file, we can create code that is going to run on our server before it loads the website. So the HT access file is going to be a configuration file for your server where we can write all sorts of things like showing a error page, a specific error page inside the website if they tried to access a page they weren't looking for, like I showed you in the previous episode. Or you can create the URL rewrite, which we're going to create in this episode here. So the first thing we're going to do inside the HT access page is we're going to go ahead and turn on this rewrite function, which we call mod underscore rewrite. So we're just going to go ahead and create a comment. The way we do that inside the HT access files by creating a hashtag symbol. Then inside the hashtag, we're going to go ahead and say mod underscore rewrite um, starts here to give it some kind of comment just so we know exactly what it does inside this document here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the code that will actually start the rewrite function. And we do that by writing rewrite engine and setting it to on. Now it's very important that you write this with the same uppercase letters as I do. So rewrite is going to be with a big capitalized R and a capitalized E, otherwise it's not going to work. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a bunch of conditions and a rule that is going to take care of this URL rewrite that we're trying to do here. Now, it's very important for me to point out that the rule is the thing that actually changes what we see inside the website, even though when we go to mntools.net forward slash cases without the extension, that it still shows the content from the cases.html page inside this link. Now, the conditions is something that has to be true in order for the rule to actually run. And this is very important to have, otherwise we might end up getting errors when we try to do this inside our website. So we first create a bunch of conditions that has to be true, and if they are, then we can create the rule, or then we have to run the rule inside the website, if that makes sense. Now the first condition inside the HT access file is going to make sure that if you have a folder called the same name as the document we're trying to access, then it's not going to make an error. Because if I were to have a folder inside my website, like I have here a folder called image and video inside my website. If I were to have a folder called cases, then it's going to give us an error because I'm trying to access the cases folder when I just write cases inside the URL. And we don't want to have an error here. So it's important that we write a comment that says, um, I do actually have a comment over here. I can go ahead and copy paste because I have notes on the side here. Um, just gonna soft wrap it. Does not apply existing directories meaning that if the folder exists in the server, then we don't change anything and don't run the rule, which comes later. So, and the way we do that, the way we actually create this condition, because remember, this is just a comment, is by actually writing rewrite cunt with a big R and a big C. Then we want to say percentage, curly brackets, and inside the curly brackets, we want to write request file name. So we're going to check if the requested file name is the same thing as one of the folders inside our directory. So we're going to say dash D, which stands for directory. Now, I want to make sure that this is not true in order for it to continue. So I'm going to say exclamation mark directory, which means that it's not going to be the same as one of the directories, okay? So if this is true, then I want to continue with a new condition. Now, the second condition is going to say that if the file we're trying to show inside the website doesn't exist, then it's not going to run the rule. So if we have cases inside the URL and we don't have cases.html inside the server, then it's going to ignore uh, the script here. So I'm going to say that we want to check for file in directory with .html extension like so. And we're going to go ahead and write the next condition here. So I'm going to say rewrite cunt with a D. And then I want to make sure that we request the file name that isn't a directory, but instead a uh, actual file. So we're going to say we want to do the same thing, percentage, curly brackets, request underscore file name. And then we want to say space, which is going to be a file. Now we do need to tell it what needs to be part of the file name. So right now we have the file name, which right now is cases inside our URL, and it has to have a .html extension behind it. And we do that by saying we want to have a forward slash 
Uh, how do I create that on my keyboard? Forward slash, I had to cut there because I didn't know how to create a forward slash on my new keyboard here. Um, a forward slash, and then we need to tell it .html. So we get the file name, which is cases, and then we need to add .html behind it. If that exists inside our directory or inside our website, then it's going to continue to the rule that is going to run, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a rule. There's a bunch of things included inside the rule that I'm going to write that I have to explain that we haven't talked about yet, which is something you typically see inside PHP or JavaScript or something like that. But I'm going to do my best to try and explain what exactly is going on inside uh, the rule in a way that you can understand it if you haven't done these sort of things before. So we're going to write the actual rule now. And there's a couple of comments I want to uh, put in here. So the first comment is going to be here we actually show the page that has the dot html extension okay let's just go ahead and keep that comment there for now if there's any other comments i will include it later um the rule is going to be written by us writing rewrite rule now the first thing you need to write inside the rule is going to be something called a regular expression. Now a regular expression is not something we talked about before, so in case you're interested in learning about it, I do have an episode of my PHP course talking about it. So if you want to learn more about it, you can go ahead and watch that episode. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do my best to explain what exactly the regular expression does when I start writing it here. So. The first thing I'm going to write is this upwards arrow, which I'm not sure what it's called in English, but I will go ahead and copy this code and paste it inside the description of this video so you can copy the symbol if you can't find any keyboard. So this basically means anything before whatever condition I'm about to write now. So I have a pair of parentheses to group together a type of condition that has to be part of uh, the search term that we're trying to get here. So inside the parentheses, I want to say I want to allow anything which is set by a punctuation and i want to say multiply which means that anything and then anything repeated after that i will allow and then i'm going to end off the regular expression with a dollar sign so we're saying we want to grab the url and allow any characters inside the url which we grab because right now we just have mmtoots.net forward slash cases i want to grab everything from the url and not disallow any special characters or anything i want to allow everything inside the url and then i want to say i want to grab the result from this regular expression here by saying dollar sign one and then i want to tell it what i want to add behind what i grabbed from the url which is everything so i want to add dot html behind the result we got from grabbing the url and again, just to explain what exactly we did here, because this may seem a bit confusing, what we did was we went ahead and said we want to grab the entire URL if these conditions up here are true. And if they're true, then we still want to show the URL as it is, but the content on the page is going to be shown from the document we have called the same name as the URL .html. So that's what we're doing here. Now, there's a couple more things I want to want to add at the end here, which is a couple of uh, conditions that also has to be true regarding the rule here, which is the fact that I don't want it to matter if there's any uppercase letters or not inside the URL. So if I were to go to, let's say I go inside my website and I go to cases.html, if I have cases with a capitalized A, then I don't want it to matter inside the URL. So. The way we do that is by writing brackets afterwards. And then we say uh, NC, which stands for, it means non-case, which I had to look at my notes because I couldn't remember it. But it basically means that the letters inside the UL can be uppercase and lowercase, and it doesn't really matter. So the next condition here I want to write by saying comma is something called a big L. Well, it's not called a big L, but it means that the conditions we have before this specific rule are only going to be applied to this specific rule down here. So if we at a later point below create other conditions and rules, then these conditions are not going to count for the next rule we create later on in document in case that's something we want to do. So again, this is something that's optional, but it's something I recommend that you include inside uh, your file here. Now, I just want to point a couple of things out regarding what we're doing here. But before we do that, I should probably go ahead and test this out inside the browser to make sure it actually works. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my uh, file here to my server. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my desktop. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab the file and paste it inside 
uh, the server here. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in the main directory of my website. And then I'm going to go and go inside my website, go back to the front page. And when I click cases, it's going to show mmtoots.net forward slash cases, but it's going to actually show the content of cases.html inside the page, even though we have cases inside the URL. So when I click cases, as you can see, it says mmtoots.net forward slash cases, but we have the actual content that we want to have inside the website. So this is how we can do this specific thing. One thing I want to add at the end here, which is something I know I'm going to get comments about in the comment area, which is the fact that right now the URL says mmtoots.net forward slash cases without a forward slash in front of it. Now, I notice a lot of people online saying that you should have a forward slash in front of the link inside the URL. And I just want to point out that I did go to Google and Google's webmasters that says that it's very rare that a forward slash in front of the link does actually matter inside a website. So if you're one of the people that worry about not having a forward slash in front of the link, then don't worry about it because it's not really going to matter in majority of cases. So that's it. That's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this episode. So hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next time.